Inside the stories that affect you. This is Inside Kelloland. Good evening and thanks for having us in on tonight's Inside Kelloland. It's been a busy week in South Dakota and some of the biggest newsmakers of the week are joining us in the studio. Well, federal health officials are helping in the investigation for the Legionnaire's disease found in Sioux Falls. An expert is joining us in the studio to walk us through what you need to know about the disease. Then plans are moving full steam ahead in the expansion of the Sioux Falls School District after voters approved a $190 million bond. Superintendent Brian Maher is here and we're looking ahead. Plus, the Sanford International Golf Tournament is wrapping up today. How did the event do in its first year in Sioux Falls? Hmm, we'll break it down. First tonight, state and federal health officials are investigating a Legionnaire's disease outbreak in Sioux Falls. So far, one person has died and about 13 others have been hospitalized. Well, here's what we know. Health officials tell us 14 people have been infected. The patients range in age from 36 to 80 years old. Health officials don't know the source of this outbreak, but do say the patients travel to or live in Sioux Falls. Legionnaires is a severe form of pneumonia caused when a person inhales water droplets containing Legionella bacteria. Well, it can come from anything from a fountain to a hot tub or even an air conditioning system. Symptoms include shortness of breath, cough, pain in chest, fever, and chills. Well, joining us now is Dr. David Basil, the Vice President of Averica Medical Group Quality. Thanks for being on with us to help us explain all this. Thanks for having me, Brady. Well, these symptoms seem to be similar to pneumonia, but can you walk us through the differences between the two? You know, there's actually, from a clinical standpoint and from a symptom standpoint, there's really not that much difference between regular pneumonia and Legionella pneumonia. So Legionella pneumonia classically starts with fevers, chills, develops into shortness of breath, you, you just feel terrible. It's, it's one of the uh, more severe forms of illness that you can get uh, muscle aches. A lot of times you have some nausea and vomiting along with it. And then the cough tends to come a little bit later. So initially you don't think about it as being a pneumonia illness until you're, you've had it for a little bit. But there's very similar to other forms of pneumonia as far as how it presents. Yeah, and it sounds like this is something like pneumonia you don't want to be messing around with. So there's a couple different forms of, of infection that you can get from the bacteria. It's a bacterial illness caused by the bacteria Legionella. And Legionella can cause a more milder form that's called Pontiac fever. And that's more of almost like a influ mild influenza illness. You get fever, body aches, and maybe a little bit of nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. But when it goes to full out Legionnaire's disease and Legionnaire's pneumonia, about 40% of those cases actually end up in the ICU. So when it, and it tends to, in healthy people, it doesn't tend to be too bad, and that's where it's more of that Pontiac fever type of presentation. But when you have somebody that's immunosuppressed, let's say they have HIV, mm -hmm. or if they've got chronic lung disease, or a transplant status, those are the ones that it affects and goes to full-on Legionnaire's disease and can really end up in the ICU with that. So how does this disease uh, spread then? So the bacteria Legionella that causes it is a water-loving bacteria, and it's a hot water-loving mm. bacteria. It needs probably 75 degrees to 110 degrees to live, and so it needs a water source that is in those warmer temperatures. And, you know, one theory of why we're seeing an increase cases in the state here recently is we've had such a hot, humid summer, right. and so there's been a lot of standing water, it's been very hot, and it's allowed the Legionella that's always there at a very low level to really take off and spread. Um, and then, you know, once that starts to get out there, that can make you sick. One of the good news is, is that Legionella really isn't spread person to person. And so it's not like influenza, where once it's in the community, we're going to start passing it back and forth. Okay. This is a water source illness. Yeah, and I remember, um, you know, just a little bit ago, uh, talking about how uh, it can be found in hot tubs. And uh, so is more of the concern than water not having it spread in your home then? Yeah, it can also, you know, it can be in hot water pipes that are standing and stuff. So any type of stagnant water can, okay. be, can be bad type of stuff. And classically, it's um, industrial commercial air conditioners from bigger building air conditionings is, is often the most common place that you'll find it, if you find a common source. But over half of the time, it, it's not so much from a single source, but it's like multiple different water sources in an area where the growing conditions are right for it. So if you, if you have it, how long does it take for you to know that you have it and that you should do something? 
you know, it's all based off of how severe your symptoms mm -hmm. are. And so just like any pneumonia, if if you feels more like a common cold or something, you, you probably don't have Legionella, or if you do, that you've got a milder case that you're going to go ahead and clear. But, you know, if you're having difficulty breathing, coughing, and, and you feel just as sick as you ever have, that's when it might be Legionnaire's disease and you really need to get taken care of. You know, and as we talked about, there already has uh, been one death and getting back to, you know, <coughs> the early part of our conversation, um, is this, is, is death a major concern? So let's go to the, why, why is this called Legionnaire's disease? Because yeah. it's a good example of how significant an illness this can be for individuals that have chronic lung disease and stuff like that. We call it Legionnaire's disease because the first time we recognized it was in 1976. There was a hotel in Philadelphia that had an American Legion convention and they had about 2,000 Legionnaires that came into that single hotel and the air conditioning of that hotel was infected with Legionella and we didn't know anything about mm -hmm. Legionella at the time. Of those 2,000, about two to 300 uh, people ended up getting pretty sick from it, and actually 30 of them died. Oh and so gosh. it can be a pretty significant illness, and yeah. that's why we call it Legionnaires today. A quick history lesson for anyone yeah. who was wondering where that came from. Well, yeah, and every time there is an uptick, it seems like it, it does make the news. Uh, um, it, would that be one of the reasons? Yeah, it's a lot more rare than something like influenza, but as far as percentages of cases, once you get it, it's, it's more dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, th this is something maybe you've already answered, but is it easy to, to identify a source? Most of the time we don't find a single point source for these things. Okay. We always look because sometimes we do find that single air conditioning unit in mm -hmm. the building. A lot of times we don't find that, but we always look. All right. Thank you for uh, giving us this information. It's important to get out there. So thank you for being Absolutely. on with us. Thank you again for having yeah. me. All right, still ahead after this week's special election, we'll look at what's next for the Sioux Falls School District coming up. Tomorrow, the Sioux Falls School District could have an architect to build a new high school. This comes after 85% of voters said yes to this week's referendum. The $190 million will pay for a new middle school, new elementary school, and upgrades to existing buildings and that high school we talked about. Only about 17% of registered voters in the district turned out to vote. So now the question is, what happens next? Superintendent Brian Maher is joining us at the Inside Kello Land desk. And thanks for being on with us. That's my pleasure. You had a big week last week. It was a big week. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at the graphics there and seeing that 85 to 15 still just puts a smile on my face. Right. And I, yeah, I was going to ask, so this is the biggest school bond in the state history, and it did pass with that wide margin. So yeah. you know, what does that tell you? Well, uh, really what it tells me is this communi whole community is committed to education. And while this uh, particular bond issue is specific to the Sioux Falls School District, I think there's a bigger message there. When I think of some of the things I've seen, Brady, in regards to Sioux Falls being uh, one of the best places to raise a family, mm. Sioux Falls being one of the best places uh, in, in, in America to retire, um, I think another thing that our, that our city can put on anything they want to is Sioux Falls, the city, committed to education. I think that vote said not only are we committed to the Sioux Falls School District, I think it says we're committed to our private schools and we're committed to our public school colleagues that surround the, the city of Sioux Falls as well. I think it was a, a great testament to support for education in general. Yeah, now it seems like it's go time. Um, you interviewed some architects last week, and tomorrow the school board could uh, approve and hire one. Tell me, how, how's all that going? Can't we sit back for a minute nope. and just enjoy it? <laughs> we're, we're on a schedule. <laughs> well, you're exactly right. Yeah. And, and we knew that, uh, that one of the things the task force said was if this bond issue passes, we'd like to be in a new high school by 2021. Mm -hmm. and, in chalk, and in checking with some contractors and some architects, they said, then you better get us on board right away. So we put out a request for proposals uh, prior to the election day, and we actually interviewed uh, architectural teams last Thursday. So the bond issue passed on Tuesday. We interviewed architectural teams on Thursday, and we'll have a recommendation in front of our Board of Education for a an architectural firm to lead this uh, through this process of building a new high school. Can you give us any clues about the design? Will it be a traditional, or will we see some creative aspects in the design? I think, uh, I think what you'll see is something that approximates what we've done in the past, uh, but remembering that we haven't, been in, haven't built a new high school since 1992. So we'll have upgrades uh, based on constructional uh, or instructional mm -hmm. 
uh, delivery systems that are different than they were you know, 25, 26 years ago, and also updates in constructional technology that might be different than they were uh, a quarter of a century ago as well. Yeah, is, is it challenging to keep all that in mind because things keep changing so quickly? Yeah, it, it really is. The thing that doesn't change is good instruction still matters. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care if it's uh, based on technology, based on lecture, uh, the, the, the best instructors still engage students and that hasn't changed. Um, you had talked about uh, 2021 being um, the open date. Um, so do you know when we could be seeing a, a groundbreaking or, or that type of ceremony? What's well, a great, uh, great question. The first thing we have to do is make sure we know where the ground is that we're going to break. And, <laughs> that and would that'll, help. And that'll be one of the first charges of the architectural team is to make a recommendation to the Board of Education on where this uh, will be. Of course, we have the, the generous offer on the table from Sanford. Uh, we also have a couple other uh, parcels of land that we're looking at. And I can tell you that Friday morning we got another call from somebody who said, are you interested in this piece of oh, land? Wow. So, so we've got some options to look through to vet, uh, uh, and we've got to do that in pretty quick order here. Well, and I hear from my parent friends talking about um, the issue of the, or the topic of school boundaries. So um, how will this affect that, and when could we start seeing some changes with those? Yeah, well, that's going to be a really, really important issue. It's not a time-sensitive issue. So our goal with the uh, redoing the boundaries will be that those will be completed about a year in advance mm -hmm. of the building being opened. Um, so we're, we're a couple of years away from redoing or at least the, the end of redoing the boundaries, at least a year away, I think, from even beginning that process. So while that's incredibly important, uh, on the schedule of things to do immediately, that's not on there. Um, and then for yeah, people who like to open and roll, will this help or hurt their chances for that in the future? Oh, it'll help. You know, the, the f We've got some buildings right now that uh, we won't allow open enrollment into. So whether you're in district or outside of district looking to get in, the fact that we'll have more facilities will increase your chances of being in the building that you that you desire. And you've probably heard this last question from a few people. Do we know what the names could be? <laughs> you know, Brady, what's funny is uh, last Tuesday night when this passed, two of the media outlets, you may have been one of them, I don't remember. I could have been. Two of the media outlets of the three that I interviewed with that night said, any ideas on the name? And uh, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. uh, ag that's, again, something that's going to be really important, and, and uh, a lot of people are going yeah. to be interested in that. We have a policy for that. There will be a process that put, that's put in place for that, but that won't happen anytime soon either. It's, I mean, it seems likely the high school, if it's a presidential name, uh, that would complete the four, but I don't know. Maybe we should go for an influential female for that name. I guess we'll find out. I'm not going to bite on any of uh, that tonight. Really. <laughs> oh, I tried really hard. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Dr. Monger, Thank for you. being on with Always us. Always a pleasure. Yes. Well, today wraps up the biggest sporting event to happen in Sioux Falls, and we're looking at the Sanford International Golf Tournament and recapping the week when Inside Kelloland continues. Oh, remember this? Yeah, rain was the story of the week for the beginning of the Sanford International Golf Tournament. The greens of the Minnehaha Country Club were cleared several times throughout the week as thunderstorms rolled through. And it was clearing that rain that got some international attention. <laughs> when a golf tournament must go on after several days of rain, some unique drying methods were brought in. Wind generated by this helicopter's rotor blades is moving water off the course. They also used squeegees. Matt Holson joins us now with a look at how the country club got ready for this big tournament. I'm Matt Holson standing here next to the 18th hole here at the Minnehaha Country Club. This golf course has been around since 1922. For more than a year, the course superintendent and his staff have been busy getting it ready for the Sanford International. David Swift is the man in charge. He's been the superintendent at Minnehaha for 10 years. Do you feel any pressure? Um, I feel, yeah, a little bit. I mean, you do because you got so much stuff um, that you want to complete. And, you know, our expectations are pretty high. So we've got our own agenda. Superintendents have their own agenda with growing grass. So we want to get everybody else's stuff out of the way so we can get back to what we do. Leading up to the Sanford International, Swift worked with PGA officials to improve sight lines and lengthen the course more than 6,700 yards. 
While the golfers will be challenged by eight new tee boxes at the club, Swift spends his time dealing with the ever-changing Kelloland weather. Yeah, we're always trying to fight, fight the weather. Mother Nature's in charge, and we just kind of let her do her thing, and then we clean up afterwards. He says high humidity recently has created problems growing grass in the rough. He's confident his crew of more than a dozen will stay on top of any issue and present a course locals can be proud of. While he's still getting over the initial shock of hosting this big event, he says it's something the club has been preparing for over the years. Minnehaha is a busy place every day. So, um, yeah, I guess looking back, maybe it wasn't so surprising, but I was a little bit at first. Swift says his favorite hole on the course is the par 317. And as we showed you, the Greens and the Minnehaha Country Club have undergone a multi million dollar renovation. Now, this is a time lapse from our Kelloland Sky Cam of the Country Club next to the 18th hole, showing the work over the last few months as crews changed the 18th hole and constructed the chalets. As you can see, this was quite the undertaking for the facility and the Greens as crews worked around the clock to get everything ready for the Sanford International. The renovations to the country club were originally supposed to be done next year, but once the tournament was announced, well, everything had to be pushed up. Oh, well, look at them go. Local businesses also made some green this week. Many vendors at the event are from right here in town, including Flyboy Donuts. The Sioux Falls Bakery will have, has had coffee and sweet treats designed specifically for the golf tournament. Another local business, Creative Surfaces, made most of the signs that you've seen at the event. A special local brew has made an appearance at this event as well. Fernson Brewing created the Wedge just for the tournament. The can features golf clubs and lemon wedges. Well, the Wedge is a Kolsch style ale, which is really nice, light, very easy drinking, perfect for a summer day or out in the golf course. Uh, and we did that with lemon drop hops, so there's a really nice citrusy note that, that is added to that. The Wedge will be sold at the Ferns and Brewery until it's gone. Kelloland TV was part of the action too. Storm Center updates were featured on video screens throughout the golf course. Hey, it's Brian Karstens. All right, we're going to learn more about the economic impact of the tournament in Sioux Falls when Inside Kelloland continues. Welcome back. The Sanford International Golf Tournament wrapped up this week. Millions of people watched Sioux Falls on display during the tournament. It was broadcast on the Golf Channel here in the U.S., on Sirius XM Radio, and to an estimated, get this, 350 million potential households outside of the U.S. on a number of other channels. But here in South Dakota, the impact was felt by local businesses, from hotels to restaurants. Joining me now is Terry Schmidt, the executive director of the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Quite the big week you have had, huh? Oh, it's been amazing. It's yeah. been an amazing week for not only Sioux Falls, but the entire state of South Dakota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's start with um, how big was this for Sioux Falls, and do we know the economic impact trickling into to our area? Well, we know it's going to be in the millions for sure. I mean, just the media coverage alone would, would drive us into the millions. What we will do now that the tournament is over is we'll go back and calculate the hotel room stays mm. and figure how many people actually stayed multiple days and that will really drive the the permanent number that will be used for economic development um, I would imagine it will be well 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 into the millions mm -hmm. we know that um, a lot of hotel rooms filled it didn't fill the entire city there were several other events going on as well but many people did stay uh, shopping eating uh, maybe going to another event while somebody goes to the PGA. So it trickles out throughout the community, mm -hmm. and we will see what those numbers are very soon. And so would you say, you know, you mentioned shopping, eating, um, hotels. Would you say hotels, prob were they the biggest um, businesses impacted by this? I would say probably restaurants oh, okay. will be the biggest. And if it's a, uh, it turns out that a lot of people drove, we will see a lot on the service mm -hmm. side for gas stations. So you, you never really know. I know there's a, per, a perception that the hotels are the biggest recipients, but that's not always true. Okay. Well, and what, one of my favorite parts of this is, um, I mean, everyone got a taste of local Sioux Falls flavor from Fernson to Flyboy. Um, how big of a deal is that to have these small local businesses having such a big stage? 
that's a big deal. I mean, that's, that's what we all work for. They have done a job b above and beyond mm -hmm. their norm to be able to get that opportunity in the first place. Now, you know, they may be mentioned on the Golf Channel. Right. These 350 million people that you mentioned, wow, who wouldn't want your product out in front <laughs> yeah. of those? That's better than Shark Tank, maybe. Huh? It is. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so those, those donut and beer makers could be yeah, busy coming they up. They could be very busy. Yeah. So, yeah, for local people, it's really a big deal. Uh, it's, it's a big deal for everybody, mm -hmm. whether a small local company or a large company. It's big time stuff. And, and you and your team, I imagine, um, have been working pretty hard. So how, how was your organization involved? And, and describe some of the work that you've had to do. Well, really, it, Sanford has been pretty much hands-on mm -hmm. making this whole thing happen with the company that they hired. But we've been more on the side of taking phone calls, helping people find a certain kind of hotel mm -hmm. room, or where can you get the best steak in town? Uh, we've been out at the airport welcoming people. And uh, during the tournament, we were on site at Minnehaha with welcoming uh, wow. people to the tournament. So we're more the hospitality okay. side. Oh, well, have you met anyone who like is just super, super far away? Um, no, I, I really didn't. But I know they've been there. OK, OK. Well, uh, getting back to um, all of the, the television exposure, um, it really is good advertising for Sioux Falls. Have you had exposure like this on such a big platform before? Not this big. Okay. Not this big. We've had exposure that's been very positive, but this will, uh, this will, I think, put Sioux Falls at yet another level of quality. You know, just the helicopter thing alone, hmm. I, I kind of um, am amused by it a little bit in the sense of that's so cool because it. You know, people from all over the world are going to see that. It shows what Sioux Falls, South Dakota will do to put on an event and do it right. Uh, that's awesome. And then, so, I guess, looking forward, uh, just quick before we wrap up, uh, do you have work cut out for you to keep this momentum going? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, every time the bar goes up, <laughs> the work goes up, too. And, and the expectations are there, and that's all right. All that's right. what we're all in this for. All right. Well, get some rest after your big weekend, and uh, thanks for being on <laughs> with us. Thank you, Bri Thanks. Take care. All right. We are recapping this entire tournament tomorrow on a special Eye on Kelloland at 10. You won't want to miss it. And be sure to head to kelloland.com to find out all of our coverage on the Sanford International page. And you can also find out more about our other topics online at kelloland.com. Just click on the Inside Kelloland section. All right, join us every Sunday following the 10 o'clock news right here on Kello TV. That's all the time we have for today, but be sure to join us again next week for more on what's going on inside Kelloland. Thanks for having us in. Be kind to each other.